Welcome to Mac Connections, the podcast. Keeping connected and looking after yourselves is so important during these changing times. We trust the following conversation will provide some helpful guidance. If you have any concerns, please get in contact with staff in the Year 12 team. We want to be able to provide all the support we can. Our patron, St Mary of the Cross MacKillop, wrote in 1875, May God bless and keep you and give you courage. We acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which this podcast is recorded. We pay our respects to their elders, past and present, and to the Aboriginal elders emerging. Episode 10, Study and Stress. Here is your host, Director of Wellbeing, Mr. Andrew Exton. Welcome to the latest edition of our podcast, looking to help our students with a whole range of different issues that they're facing during this remote learning. And we're with Joe Parker again from HeartSparks. Thanks so much for coming, Joe. Today, we're going to talk about stress and study. And Joe, when I talked about this with you prior to recording, I was saying, what comes first? Does the study come first and the stress follow? Or does the stress come first because of the study that we've got to do? It is a bit of a a chicken and the egg sort of dilemma, isn't it, about how they relate to each other and how they impact on each other? Oh, it totally is. Thanks for having me back. And yeah, it just depends on the day, I think, as to which one feels like it comes first or even depending on the hour (laughs) some days as well. But they're definitely interlinked, they're connected and they affect each other so much too. Now, Joe. I think sometimes when I use the term study at, 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 um, at school, some of our students who don't necessarily see themselves as high performing students sometimes switch off and say that study doesn't really apply to me. But I'm thinking particularly during this period where we're sitting at a desk in various places of the home, staring at a computer, that we are studying. We're all doing work to prepare ourselves for something, whether it be a sack or an exam or whatever it might be. So we're all studying. It seems to me the key is just about working out the best ways to do it for you and what's going to be most effective for you. So in your experience, what are some of the the tips around study that all students can use to be better students, I suppose? Mm, I really love what you said there about the fact that all of us are studying all of the time in some way, because I've, that is just so true and speaks so much to my experience as well. I'm still studying without, (laughs) without even doing any courses right now, because my work and how I move out in the world just absolutely requires that of me. And the other thing you mentioned there, which I think is really important to hone in on is that notion of finding something that works for each of us, because just as we're all incredibly unique, what it is that we need to do to get the best out of ourselves when we're studying or learning or practicing anything new in life is going to be really different. What I can speak to though is the brain psychology behind some of this and also the well-being space and how we can work with ourselves in that way to get the best out of ourselves. And there are three areas that I think come into this every single time. The first one is having a plan. The second one's about the environment. And then the third one is the fun one, which is about hacks and how we can almost trick our brain and our body into working better for us than it would necessarily start to do. When we're thinking about studying in time or working in time, one of the things that I encourage a lot of people to do is to sit down and map out a clear plan. And it sounds a bit boring, but it has a really great effect on how we're able to show up and remember things in our mind as well. And so sitting with a blank week calendar it's a great thing to first of all start by popping in all of the commitments that you know you have be it classes things you need to do for the family work if you're still working at this time and get all of those down 
Then secondly, to make time for meals and exercise and sleep, because they're the things that tend to get forgotten when we start working really hard. And then thirdly, to look at those pockets of time that are left and to check in with how we like to perform. For example, I'm completely useless before about 9am, 9.30am in the morning. And so for me to try and study or work or do anything new at 7.30 is never going to work. Whereas if you sit me down at a computer at nine o'clock at night, I'm a gun and I'll get lots done. So you've been doing this working from home for a while now. So you're a little bit more experienced. And in working with you and putting these podcasts together, the one thing that I've noticed is that you are strict about the allocation of time with tasks <laughs> and that you are, it is important to you to know exactly what you're doing and when you're doing it to be honest to the commitment that you made and to be thorough and prepared for what you're being asked to do. It seems to me that for people less experienced at remote learning or home studying than you, it, it's very easy to give that away and allow your day to sort of be a, mi a mix, mix and match of a whole lot of different things without being able to get continuity into your space. So it seems to me that if you want to reduce your stress around this, being reasonably rigid around the time and the allocation of time and having a clear understanding about what you're going to do on that day is really important. Yeah, and it's funny you say that because life gets in the way, right? So no matter how rigid we try and be, there's always going to be those days where everything goes out the window. And the reason that I love having a plan in place and a clear timeline is more so because it means I get to hold the same amount of weight for all of the fun things in my life and the things I really value as I do the other work commitments that I love too. So for example, just as we've had a really clear allocated time to record this podcast episode, I'm going to show up with the same level of commitment to playing in the backyard with my dog <laughs> at yeah. five o'clock today when I know that I'm going to clock off and treating all of those different pockets of my life with the same amount of accountability and, um, and rigidity is a really boring word, but with the same amount of focus means that it almost takes the pressure off something like this podcast episode because it's no more or less important than anything else that I do. Now you mentioned hacks and I'm not sure where you are on your list, but I'll let you go back to, to what you were talking about before I, before I asked the question, but it did strike me that that's important and you can't give that away. Absolutely. So important. And it's one of those things that gets easier over time. At the start, it can feel like you're almost holding yourself to chore or forcing yourself to show up for different things. But just like any routine with school, it tends to get easier over time. Yep. The, the other thing is really around environment. So finding a study space that feels good and is also conducive to learning. That's the, the best possible position where those two things cross over. And so depending on where we live and who we live with and what kind of home environment we have, that can look really different for all of us. But just trying to find a space where you know you can go to study and also claim it for your own is really important. Yep. When it comes to hacks, these are just little ways that we can trick our brain and train our brain. And some of them are really obvious and some of them are a bit obscure. So the obvious ones are things like sitting down to study and not having a whole lot of distractions around us. Some of the less obvious ones are things like chewing gum, which sounds a bit silly, but if we chew gum while we're trying to learn things, it tends to improve our brain focus. There's some research around this, but no clear understanding as to why that's the case. It also shows in the research that we'll learn so much more if we sit down and focus on just one core area of study or one core section within a subject. They call this hacking for about 20 to 25 minutes. And then we give ourselves a five to 10 minute break and come back to do the next one. It shows that if we give that space to our brain, we're going to retain information more easily. There's also a lot of research that suggests that our memory is improved when we study either directly after exercise or directly before we go to sleep. And so even thinking about how we order our days can change how likely we're going to retain information. And then focusing in on what it is that we need personally to feel like studying is important. So for some of us, just the knowledge that studying can lead to 
more knowledge or good grades is enough to motivate us to sit down. For, for others, we really need to have some great reward at the end for a job well done in order to motivate ourselves to stay through. So just understanding what that is can be really helpful too. And Joe, finally, one of the things I think, we talk about the word stress, and I probably see that as it's, it's seen as a negative term. We're stressed or we're under stress. That's sort of a sense of not being in control. I think one thing that I'd, I'd observe is that in all work walks of life, in all aspects of what we do, there's a degree of pressure. Whereas stress is sometimes the build-up of pressure to the point where we don't feel in control or aren't able to manage the aspects of our lives that we're dealing with. So I think the reality is for most of our students studying Year 12, there's a degree of pressure or a degree of, you know, um, I suppose understanding that there's an importance around what we're doing. Stress is almost the build-up of that to the point where I don't feel like I can continue to function or manage that pressure over a long period of time. Is Am I wrong in thinking that way that, you know, we're going to feel a degree of pressure, but it's not going to become stressful if we're able to, to have some of the things in place that you've talked about today? Yeah, it's really great to make that differentiation because at its most basic, stress is the increase of a couple of hormones in the body, adrenaline and cortisol. It's more of that circling around our system. And based on that, some stress is actually a really good thing for us because with increased adrenaline and cortisol, we're likely to actually perform better in any kind of exam or sporting or life situation. We're likely to be heightened. So stress in that sense, in small bursts, is actually a really good thing and something that is going to help us do better at whatever we're trying to achieve. It's when those levels of cortisol and adrenaline are heightened for a really long period of time that then it moves into overwhelm stress, which is what we're talking about when it becomes too much. And so I know when I was studying, I used to feel stressed or feel that pressure that you're speaking about and start to almost internally freak out because I thought that it was the start of everything going wrong. Whereas if I'd been able to take a step back and recognize that stress and natural pressure for what it is and just a part of the time and then step in to do some of the things that we've just spoken about to support it, not to continue for too long, I would have had a completely different experience. So accept it as normal, plan mm. around, plan for it, have strategies in place and routines in place that support you being able to manage it. And we're going to have students come out of this period understanding that if we do some of the things that you've talked about today, that we're probably going to be understanding a little bit more about what causes us to be stressed and some of the things that we can do about it. So we hope that today's um, little session and podcast has helped our students with regards to looking at routine and looking at um, study habits and study skills in a way of not mitigating stress, but making it more manageable. Joe, thanks as always. We'll see you next week. And it's important that we finish now because the time I ha have allocated for my golf practice is nearing <laughs> and I need to make sure that I go out there and allocate the correct time to my golf swing, as all my students will know is pretty important. So thanks for coming along and uh, thanks for your contribution. And we'll hear from you next week. Yeah, looking forward to it. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Joe. That brings us to the end of this episode. A reminder, if you do need any help, if you have any queries, questions or concerns, please contact a member of the Year 12 team. Be kind and look after yourself.